Consciousness only knows free will. Nothing ever happened to you. Everything only ever, ever happens by you, through you, by your consent, by your choice. Not necessarily on this level of your consciousness. You don't know the choices you make all the time. But that doesn't mean that your overall consciousness is not making the choices of what you experience and when you experience it. There is only free will. However, upon birth, to an extent, and in the few years after birth, we have, through immaturity, and that's not a judgment, it's just an innocent observation, uh, a reality, in a sense, in our civilization, in our society, through immaturity, through not knowing how to take up our own perspective, our own vibrational alignment, to not know how to vibrationally, consciously take care of ourselves in a deliberate, co-creating way. We have given away, seemingly, we have given away, seemingly, our free will. To what? To another portion of our consciousness. So now we call that the unconscious and the subconscious or the higher conscious. But really, in a sense, it's all just our own consciousness. But we have delegated certain responsibilities, certain tasks to an automatic type of mind. Some of it will always be governed by our super alive, active, higher self-consciousness. But some of it is given away out of choice to an, what we would call an unconscious mind. Because we did not take up the responsibility, which is really the same as duty, honor, joy, bliss. That's what true responsibility is. It's the bliss of taking care of yourself, of honoring your desire, of honoring your alignment, of honoring who you really are, of honoring the play, what you came here to do. So we've given away that responsibility, that has that honor, that duty, that joy, that bliss. We've given that away to another portion of our consciousness because we basically said, I am not grown up enough yet. I have not gained enough perspective yet to take care of that portion of what needs to be taken care of consciously. And so as you grow up, ideally the intention is that upon birth, you give away, a, this is natural, you give away a portion of your responsibilities to another level of your very own being, your very own consciousness. Then to your portion of your personality consciousness, that other portion now seems like it's the unconscious mind. But it's not really unconscious because there is no such thing. It's simply unconscious to this level of your consciousness. But it's fully conscious to that level of your consciousness. So there is no unconsciousness, not really. So we've given that away. That's a natural part of being born in this particular density or vibratory state of our civilization. And then the idea is, the ideal idea is that over the course of our growing up, we regain perspective. And as we regain perspective, as we remember who we are, as we start to take care of ourselves again, deliberately, consciously, intentionally, vibrationally, what happens is that we quite literally start downloading more and more of that which we have given away upon the time of birth into our conscious responsibility, which is the same as our joy, our duty, our honor, our bliss, our service. And so the more you grow up consciously, the more active conscious mastery you regain of what you deliberately, in a sense, gave away to another portion of yourself. And so you start thinning the lines between your conscious and your unconscious and your higher conscious and all these different labels. They start to become more and more one unified flow, one unified consciousness. That is another way of saying you become more and more in alignment with who you really already are. And you start to make active more of your capacity. So in that sense, you regain free will. Free will is always already the case, but you've pretended for a while to create this veil, the separation between my conscious and my unconscious or my higher conscious. And now what you're doing literally by learning to take care of yourself again vibrationally and consciously and choose your state of being in any moment and choose to honor your desire and choose to actually act on your excitement and choose to think things into creation instead of just struggling your way through creation, but actually to imagine it into creation and then to simply take the natural actions that follow as a physical complementation to that creation process, very effortlessly so, because you don't create resistance to yourself anymore. You simply create and then you act it out. You're not creating one thing and then trying to act out something else. Your creation, your imagination, and your actions are now aligned, so you don't experience as much, if any, resistance in the flow of action anymore. When you do that, when you do all of that, when you expand your consciousness, you regain your free will, which you never lost. You just kept it in storage for a while. You delegated it to another portion of your consciousness, but now you're regaining that free will. What comes with free will? Power. Again, just to use the term spiritual power, which we could omit, but just to clarify, I'm not talking about the type of power that Hitler was after. I'm talking about a spiritual type of power, for lack of a better word, a vital type of power, 
a vital type of energy, a, an alignment itself, the ability to, in a sense, move mountains out of alignment, out of effortlessness, out of deliberate alignment. So when you regain your free will, more of it, your energy amplifies, it accelerates, it expands, and you literally become more of who you already were, simply forgotten before, but now remembered. And the single most powerful way to do this is to dare to dream big. So if you wish to go from unconscious, from victim, to free will, to power, then dare to dream big. Don't give up. Don't give up. Doesn't matter how much you need to struggle because it is through dedication to your dreams, whatever they may be, that you will find freedom from struggle. But you can't find freedom from struggle by not ever trying to go big, by not ever trying to desire what you desire, by not allowing that desire in. You need to allow your desires in. You need to allow that alignment in, that truth of who you are. You need to allow yourself to be inspired and to not block that out of fear. It is only through accepting your purpose, your blueprint, your dreams, that you can actually learn to navigate them with less and less and less and less resistance, with less and less and less and less fear. And what you'll experience 